So, happy Reformation Sunday. <laughs> Tomorrow, October 31st, is the 505th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. This is the day when Martin Luther tacked a document on the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral in Germany with 95 theological propositions and criticisms of the church. This was the beginning of the Lutheran church. And Luther was just the first of the Protestant reformers, but there were many others. Ulrich Zwingli was a contemporary of Luther and John Calvin came a generation later. Calvin and Zwingli suggested more radical reforms, many of which influenced the way we worship today. An important outcome of the Protestant Reformation was the rediscovery of the doctrine of grace, the unmerited, unconditional love of God that reaches out to us even before we reach out to God. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, verse 7. Zwingli introduced a biblical focus, where preaching interprets scripture in the current context. He also emphasized the role of lay people in worship, which created a path for me to be here sharing worship with you this morning. He introduced the concept of communion being served around a great big table in the middle of the sanctuary with congregants serving each other instead of the priest doing that. There have been many reforms to the church since then, but Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli had a major influence on the way we worship today. Our own denomination, the United Church of Canada, also continues to change and adapt. In recent years, we have prayerfully discerned the idea of what it means to be truly inclusive and welcoming to God's children in all our diversity. This is reflected in the response of welcome we use here at Emmanuel at the beginning of each service. The church also seeks out leaders with an attitude of cultural humility, reconciliation, and servant leadership. As some of you may know, I was recently appointed to the candidacy board of Quebec and Eastern Ontario. Our role is to interview candidates who are on the path to ministry at various stages along their journey. In preparation for this work, I attended a week of training in Toronto at the end of September with folks from across the country who work under the umbrella of the Office of Vocation. I remember someone saying that we were all there because we were United Church geeks. And I realized I was with my people. <laughs> We learned about the Indigenous Candidacy Board and the Grandmother's Circle that supports them. The Church's commitment to be anti-racist. The role of the Admissions Board, which accompanies ministers from other denominations around the world who wish to serve in the United Church. The Credentialing Committee, which works with chaplains, among other things which Brian Copeland is on, by the way, and the Response, Remedial, and Standards Committee that hold up the ethical standards of the church. I was struck by the number of people engaged in this important work, the deep faith and commitment of those gathered, and the enthusiasm to recruit and retain the best equipped church leaders for our time and context. We acknowledged the many challenges the church is experiencing today, 
including COVID, aging congregations, financial shortfalls, and polarization of opinions. But there have always been challenges from biblical times to the present. That's why the letter from, to the Thessalonians says, therefore, amongst God's churches, we boast about your perseverance in fa and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. But at my training, there was also a lot of hope. We learned about the strategic plan for the church from 2022 to 2025 and the new vision called by God as disciples of Jesus, the United Church of Canada seeks to be a bold, connected, evolving church of diverse, courageous, hope-filled communities united in deep spirituality inspiring worship and daring justice. The author, C. Kirk Hathaway, a minister of research and evaluation in the United Church of Christ, one of our sister denominations, wrote a book called, Behold, I Do a New Thing. In it, he states that the purpose of the church should be to transform people. This past week, my candidacy board has met by Zoom with four different candidates for ordination. There were many reports to read from the candidates, their placement supervisors, and their circle of support. They had all been on the candidacy pathway for years and being interviewed by our committee before I was on it at different stages of their journey. And this was the final interview. It was so inspiring to read and hear about how each candidate had been transformed along the way, growing deeper in their faith and relationship with God. I was delighted that we were able to recommend all four of them for ordination. It's a real time for celebration. I believe this is very hopeful for our denomination. Well, we have, currently we have 26 candidates that are in, on the path to, uh, towards ordination, and that's within um, the, all of Quebec and Eastern Ontario region. So we're going to, we're going to be doing a lot of interviewing, I see. Our gospel reading today is about the transformation of Zacchaeus, a tax collector who is perceived as ritually unclean and morally corrupt because he works for the Romans. Yet he has heard about Jesus and wants to see him so badly that he climbs a tree for a better view. Surprisingly, Jesus calls Zacchaeus by name and breaches social etiquette by inviting himself to this stranger's house. In the Mediterranean world, it is considered an honor to be the host. In Lebanon, for example, a host greets a guest by saying, Tasharafna, you honor us. Jesus must honor Zacchaeus by being his guest. In turn, Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus and experiences joy. Encountering Jesus is transformational for Zacchaeus, who promises to give to the poor and makes, make restitution to anyone he may have cheated. The story of Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus, along with unexpected transformations, is a cause for joy, hope, and renewed patience by those who seek and work for the writing of relationships, the building of healthy community, and the healing of creation today. On this Reformation Sunday, let us remember with gratitude those who have reformed and continue to reform the church in response to God's call. 
Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I will dine with you tonight. Where is Christ calling you to serve? How will you be transformed by God's unconditional love today? God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pause for a few moments of silent reflection, followed by a short prayer. Fill us with your power and presence, O God, so we may, like our grandparents in faith, carry your truth, your beauty, and your justice to the world you so love, a world in such need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 